Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and as you mentioned, for example, uh, in in the case of big organizations, usually you would have yeah more designated people uh, to do privacy threat modeling. Probably have much more capabilities when it comes to privacy threat modeling. However, uh, our next question is actually, for example, if you have a young startup, a small company, uh, which obviously has uh, much more limited resources, um, wh where should you start if you're if you're aiming to do privacy threat modeling? Maybe you're a small software company that needs to do it. So where should it uh, should you start when it comes to privacy threat modeling? And for example, in what what in, in general, what should your priorities be when it comes to to modeling privacy threats? Well, from my perspective, unless <clears throat> unless you are developing security and privacy specific products, and unfortunately, you, you you have to forget about any threat modeling and any security. You should survive first. So that that's a bit of a somber view uh, on things for startup, at least. Um, if if you are developing security and privacy specific products, uh, you should just call Codific and we'd be happy to assist you. <laughs> well, no, joking aside, you can you you should go and and do a threat modeling training. Uh, many conferences organize those, uh, like I mentioned, Black Hat, OWASP conferences. Uh, this is like it's a regular event that pops up uh, virtually anywhere on the planet. Um, I, I would say the biggest names are Adam Shostak and Sebastian de Leersneder. Uh, they are often organizing uh, trainings. I think it's a one day training. It will give you a jump start and then you can read books. You could do as, as a startup, you could do it. I, I would say if you have a limited budget, you don't really have to call an expert, but then your Fed model quality would be not best. But again, It's good to have, it's better to have a, a, a bad thread model than have no thread model at all and not, not do thread modeling at all. You can also read a, a, a lot of books that those guys have published. Um, and there is quite some, there are quite some resources uh, on YouTube if you want to learn more about thread modeling. Yeah. Well, in terms of security, I, I, yeah, it, it's a good idea to, to start from thread modeling, to do thread modeling. I have to add some nuance to the answer because you kind of said ignore privacy. That's maybe a bit too strongly put. Um, no, no, I didn't say ignore. <laughs> the problem is you have limited resources and then if you are, you need to release a product and typically you're not going to focus on anything about security and privacy. That's yeah, the reality. Well, I'm not saying you should. Yeah I, yeah, I think at least ask yourself the question, when you are processing personal data, do I really need it all? Can I minimize it a bit? Because if you think of, of like, well, all the personal data you're collecting, you're responsible to keep it safe, to keep it secure and to, to not abuse it. So whenever anything goes wrong, when there is a breach, when you share it with too, too much uh, third parties or whatever, it, it, it will have, well, You might be fined, people will sue you. There might be really personal damages there, depending on the impacts um, of, of the information. So it might sound like, how well, who will find this tiny startup? But at least if you consider, do I really need it? Can I maybe change my idea a bit so that I can reduce the personal data I collect? That's like the first step there. And then if you have time, look at Linden. Well, I think it, it, it is useful to at least get that basic understanding of security and privacy, that at least you have somebody who is knowledgeable about the basics there. Um, and and yeah, go from there and you can extend into a, a full threat modeling program that is integrated in in the development life cycle or, or in the, the company structure there. Yeah, I, I agree, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Kim. At um, least thinking about not collecting data that you're not going to need or, or yeah. not collecting data, even if you think I, I might need this in the future uh, is a great idea. So you are not then you reduce your liability in a way. Yeah. yeah.